Hello. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Sarah Main. Um, I am the CEO founder of Reach Social. So the definition has kind of changed since the, the beginning. Um, it's more like a Slack, Asana, Trello put in one for students. So I'm really trying to revolutionize the ed tech space, but from a student standpoint. And why I want to share my story today is basically I'm 23, and I started my startup while I was in university with no tech background, no business background, and no work experience. So this is my story and how I got there and the lessons I've learned. So basically, I would say it starts off with your why, um, your passion, your purpose, and my personality probably contributed a lot to it. Um, I absolutely love what I do, and I wake up every single day wanting to make education better. And I think that goes along with the ups and downs of startups because it's never easy, and if you love what you do, it gets you out of bed in the morning. And then also, uh, entrepreneurship's not for everyone because I would say, I would encourage everyone to do it, but make sure you have thick skin. You have to be able, be able to deal with rejection, and you have to have a lot of confidence. So yeah, that's what I'd say is my personality, pretty competitive. Um, so basically, the traditional route, I would say, is people have an idea. Um, they then form a team to build this idea, and then you get a product. Um, with that product, you give it to users, and if there's high demand, you then get data. You then go raise capital, and then once you've raised capital, sometimes you go into incubators to help you grow that team. And how I do... Oh, I'm missing a s slide. All right, well, my route, um, basically, I had an idea... I then went and built a team, but most importantly, um, I built an advisory team. And the most important thing there was I established credibility for my name because I had no experience. Um, and then when I had uh, an advisory team, I went and then got market validation. So I went straight to the schools to uh, validate that I had demand for this product. Um, once I had um, market validation, I then went in an incubator to learn how to actually build a business. And that was the next big thing um, under Ryan Holmes of Hootsuite. And I basically learned what to do and how to do it. From there, um, I then went and raised capital. And with that capital, I told my shareholders that I would then get a product and be able to get to the next stage with my team without having to ask for more money. And then that's how I got a product. So I did things a little bit reverse. So what I did with market validation is I basically went to the CTOs of all the universities in BC or the local ones and I knew that I had a problem because I experienced it in school and I wanted to get the validation that they had it too. So I actually got letters of intent from the CTOs saying that if they had their, this product they would then use it at school. So with their support and signed letters of intent I could then prove that schools would pay for it and actually use it before even having a product. Oh, there, there's my root. Um, and then I felt that because I was so young and inexperienced, I should get an advisory board that would serve as basically a bigger voice in the community. And I wanted to make sure that I had the top people in the industry to not only help me with connections, but help me figure out what I was doing and basically help me build my business. So I actually got um, one of the VPs at Hootsuite, Daraj Goel. He's actually now my business partner. So he was an advisor for a year and now is my CTO. Um, Preet Jassy, he's the lead UX at EA Games, helps me with my tech stack. Um, my Maria Pasella was a managing director, so she helps me with my finances and raising. Um, Joe Garcia is a managing partner, so he's my legal advisor. Um, Orette Morgan is the program head of technology, so he's my academic advisor to teach me how to sell and basically help me go into ed institutions. And then my father is a CEO, and he's taught me how to be a leader and improve there. So what I did is I actually went to my friends and family and I raised $150,000, but on one condition was that if I wanted to get more money, I would have to get it myself, not through them, and I'd have to be able to build a product, get data to be able to make it to the next round. And I'll kind of explain how I did that. So because I knew that I had a product in a new industry, essentially education, there's not many ed tech startups in Canada at all, I did a lot of research on how I could actually build up my product, pay for my salary without having to dilute myself, and actually how to not um, raise more money. So I found a program called the IRAP Technology Validation Project. 
and that essentially gives grants to industries which need to be innovated in, such as education. So with the support of these schools backing me, saying they wanted in innovation, I was able to get money from the government to pay for my salary and pay for extended development for what the schools were asking for. And then I also knew after talking to so many schools before I started the business that a lot of schools had tons of education grants. So these grants actually went directly to me to build out specific feature sets that they were asking for. So then giving me another $100,000 of runway. And lastly, um, when I was raising friends and family, everyone was like, don't you have to build a mobile app? Well, yes, the future is mobile, but students do work on laptops. So I knew I couldn't just build a mobile app, I had to have both. So I decided I would put all of the money towards a desktop platform as students go on their laptops first. But I went and actually through my peers, um, I went and pitched the UBC uh, engineering class of, that were graduating this year. And five students built out my mobile application for free, which saved me another $100,000. So I now have a desktop and mobile app for the price of one. And that's all. Thanks, guys. So I actually started with a contracting company because that's why I raised the money to build the MVP. And then I actually hired uh, developers afterwards on equity alone. Yeah. How much did I give you to Oh, the UBC developers was free. They, that was their class project. So I didn't pay a cent. That, like, I, basically, the way that the Capstone projects works is that you go to UBC, BCIT, they have the same thing, and companies submit a proposal of what you want built by the students, and then you have to give a 30-second pitch, and the students have to pick your project, and I got picked, luckily. So they built out my entire mobile app completely for free over the course of six months. Yeah. So that's the thing, is if anyone has an idea to start a company, it's a good way to start a mobile app if you have time. Thank you. Um, how many of the people that helped you build the first iteration are still with you? Um, well, I, since I started the contracting company, none. But the people I've hired afterwards are also with me. Yeah. It actually took me about a year. So I, when I had my idea in university, um, from January 2015 until February 2016, I didn't have a product. I didn't have a product until the summer of 2016 and then now. So it's been very short. But um, it took me a long time, obviously, to figure out if I had an idea, went in the incubator, um, got basically taught, found my advisory board, raised money, and then had a product. Yeah. yeah. So how many hours of development time would you say you still have to go through the product? Or how do you have to? Um, I would say February till the end of June, probably. 40 hours a week for two developers. It's hard to tell because it was outsourced for the company, so I don't know how much they do. I was like, I'm not like talking to them every single day, but I would say because it's contracting, they're probably doing it at a rate of a full-time job, where if you actually have it in-house, which I recommend every single person to do, don't contract, but I obviously learned the hard way. Um, if you have it in-house, they can obviously develop 80 hours a week, go much faster, you get more equity, and then you have a product very quickly. Yeah, yeah. None, because basically I wanted them to just say they would use my product and trial it in their classes, and that's what the people I was presenting to wanted to see, just the demand. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, there's two goals. Obviously, I play back and forth. Um, when I first started it, I always said I would make it nothing short of a billion-dollar company, and it was I wanted to break all these barriers, whatnot. That's obviously a very big ambitious goal. I still believe that if I can crack the tech market, I could get there one day, maybe be the first big student-driven app. But ideally, realistically, what's probably more reasonable is to be acquired by a learning management system within like probably 10 years of developing the product and then they acquire companies to basically add on to them because they already have market share. They're huge companies. They're not innovating in this space. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, so essentially um, the word of advice came from my dad because he said, you're going into technology, you have n don't know what you're doing, you have no business background, if you're going to figure it out, you probably get a, want a team around you. So he gave me the word of advice, and what I simply did was go on LinkedIn, find who I wanted to find, research them, found out from legal to tech to marketing to every single background, made sure everyone was in the stream. Um, I reached out to them and asked for coffee, and I asked them to be my advisor within two meetings, and then I gave them equity, and then they agreed to meet with me once a month altogether, and it's been now over like, 18 months of them doing that. Great. Yeah. Oh. Well, anyone? Yeah? Yeah, so basically, um, I would say there's a little bit different feature set from all of them. None of them do it to combine. Slack is basically the chat system with all those integrations, where I'm more of a digital planner, um, integrated with the learning management system, but then with the chat-like functionality extended off of that. So it's kind of like I took the best feature of all of them, dumbed it down, and put it into one platform, because students don't want to learn how to use a platform. They just want to know what's given to them. They can use it right away. Yeah. Uh, well, we've, we're already on version like probably 1.4. Um, what was the version one that you guys got? The very first MVP, I got it for 40 grand. Um, then since then, I've obviously brought in house. A lot of things are different. But um, an MVP is like bare bones. Like you put it in front of someone, and you're like, oh my God. Like, like, like you said, if you're not embarrassed by your first product, you're not going quick enough. So, like, it was pretty minimum. Uh, 40 grand for the MVP, and then I've probably put an additional like 60K into it now, but like it's way further along. Yeah. Yep. How did I deal with them or how did I get them? So basically, the, when I first started, that's why I got someone legal on my team. I need legal advice. Basically, it's a race to market. I didn't really have propriety software. I'm not really doing anything different. It's I, Someone could look at me and say, wow, you're the same thing as Facebook. You're the same thing as Slack. I'm not really doing anything new. I'm just doing it differently and bringing it all into one platform. So I don't have IP. No. I don't. No. It's not new, no, it's, it's just every, everyone's used to it, everyone knows what it is. I'm just, the, we're the first company bringing it all into one, but taking different aspects of it into one platform. Yeah, it's, a, it's basically a website uh, software, so you log into the website and it does all the, it's essentially like if you think about Facebook, you log into a website and it has all those capabilities that it does it for you. Uh, I have copyright on my mock-ups from what my design is and what I've done, but essentially the back end, a lot of it, you can also get open source, whatnot. It's, it's, it's all out there. There's nothing in different about the code. Yeah. 